I was looking it up. There are some recipes out there for crab apples, so I might be trying that sometime. You can make cider, probably some sort of vodka. <laughs> and I think there were some other recipes too that I saw. Apple moonshine. Hello, my name is Crystal and welcome to our channel. I'm filling up some water for the kids. But we are planting our fruit trees today outside. We have two different varieties of apple trees that we're gonna be planting and then we also have two pear trees that we hope to get in the ground too. Not 100% settled on where I would like to put the pear trees, so we're kind of waiting on that. That's for the dogs? Yep. All right, here's your... Yay! Thank you, Mommy. You're welcome. Thank you, Mommy. You're welcome. Are you playing with the bubbles? That water is really cold. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the varieties of trees that we have. Here are our trees. So we have a Granny Smith apple tree, a snowdrift crab apple tree that was gifted to me by my grandmother and we have a Bartlett pear tree and a moon glow pear. Now, I'm not 100% sure on where the pear trees are gonna go because of this dead beauty here. It needs to come down and I don't want the pear trees in the way of the tree guys needed to, needing to take that down. So, I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. Speaking of apple trees, let's talk about my winter sowing. Two of the jugs that I started included organic apple seeds from apples we had gotten at the store. And this one is a Granny Smith that I sowed on January 26th from apple seeds dried out from last year. Rocky, how did you get out? This is from an organic Macallan apple from the store and this I winter sowed at the same time as the other ones and it just sprouted last week or so. We transplanted it into here and we'll see how it does. This one I've talked about before. It's from a gala apple seed from an organic apple from the store and that one's doing really good. This one I started last year in a solo cup and it's growing really well. This one is from a Cortland apple tree, one of the ones that we planted last year. It was a shoot from the bottom, so I took it and I threw it in dirt to see if it would grow more, and it is doing pretty good. These are our two Cortland apple trees that we got at the end of last summer from Lowe's. They seem to be doing really good. We had, and I have footage from it, a couple days ago we noticed that the leaves were curling really badly. I wasn't sure if it was lack of water or something, but it turned out each curled leaf had a ton of disgusting, yucky aphids. So what we did was we uncurled them to see, make sure that's what it was. And then I just ended up ripping all those leaves off and we burned them. And I think I found on each one of the trees, like the big, two big aphids. I don't know if that was like the king and queen of each tree, but we took all of the curled leaves off, burned them, and then we sprayed the tree with some neem oil. So we just sprayed around the tree and sprayed the top part to hopefully prevent any more aphids. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. This is where we are going to be planting the Granny Smith tree. The tree that my grandmother got me, the crab apple tree, is going to go up there on the cliff. And when people drive up the road here, they're going to be able to see that beautiful tree when it blooms. The flowers are so pretty on it. This morning, Steve took down a couple of the trees that would be in the way. We took down a part of this one that was leaning over where the Granny Smith tree is gonna go. Up here, we took down just some small ones that would be in the way of the crab apple tree. And it should be noted too that last year this was completely overgrown and act this spot right here was actually our enormous brush pile where we had been for the past five years putting all of our sticks and brush and stuff. So the fact that we were able to see ground <laughs> this year is really exciting. And saw that there were flowers coming up, bulbed flowers. But we plan on fixing up the stone wall and a little bit more landscaping to be done over here. It is definitely an improvement from last year. 
So we have the two apple trees that are going in, and then we also have plant tone. And I picked up these bags of tree and shrub garden soil. So in each of the holes, I'm just gonna put half a bag of this and mix it in. But we can talk about that as I do it. So, uh, ready? Yep. I need a shovel and my gloves. I gotta go get that stuff. Here we are. <laughs> We dug up the hole and hardly any rocks except for some smaller stuff, which is no big deal at all. We are planting it 20 feet away from that tree, which is 20 feet away from the other tree. We came across a bunch of sand, which we've experienced over here before. A long time ago, I'm pretty sure this whole section was possibly the old septic system and leaching fields. I had found last year a lot of broken concrete over in that corner that looked like it was from an old septic tank or dry well or something, but we're coming across a bunch of this sand and stone and I'm thinking that possibly it's from that. What we're gonna do to mediate the sandy situation is my brother had gifted us all this topsoil here and we're gonna mix some of that with some of that and that fill the hole with it and then we'll use that some of it on the hill too when we do the other tree. I also plan on top dressing with some of this plant tone that I have. It says it's pretty much for everything, but trees and shrubs are also listed on it. So I think it'll be fine. Hey, hey, what is up? So we're back here. While we were planting the trees, a mild thunderstorm quickly rolled in and we had to get the cameras inside. We had to take a little break ski, have some dinner. But let's talk about what we did. So the first thing we did was we dug the holes and we mixed in the topsoil with the fertilizer in one of the holes because it had a lot of sand in it. When we dug the hole, we made it two or three times the size of the container so I could really put some of that good soil down underneath so the roots had somewhere that they would want to go to. I also mixed in with that some plant tone and then we put the tree in. The first one, the roots kind of fell apart in the container. So when we went to take it out of the container, it just kind of fell apart. So we had to carefully plant that. But what I like to do when I plant trees is I like to make sure that they are higher than the ground around them so that there's no opportunity for water to pool around the base of the tree. Once the tree is in the ground and we've backfilled it, I top dress with plant tone, water it in, and then put mulch around the bottom of the tree. Afterwards, we put in a couple of these smaller leftover T-posts that we had and some of the leftover horse fencing from making the chicken run. We just put that around the base of the tree just to prevent some predators from actually being able to get right up close to it. I still think that possibly a deer would be able to reach over and maybe nibble at it. I think it's fine for now. We haven't had any problems with the other ones and that is it. Now we have two new apple trees put in. This is a Granny Smith. We have the two Cortland that we planted at the end of last summer. Up here is the crab apple tree and I think it will do really well here and it will be very pretty to see it coming down the road when it blooms. And I was looking it up there are some recipes out there for crab apples so I might be trying that sometime. You can make cider, probably some sort of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there were some other recipes too that I saw. Apple moonshine. Jams and jellies. Yeah, but what do they call that? Apple butter. So I think that'll do really well there. Now, I was originally planning to put the pear trees on the other side of the property, but I'm beginning to change my tune. They don't get very big, the ones that we got. And I think I may put them over here. I'm not sure yet. I will have to do another video when we plant the pear trees. We're gonna try and get the chickens in their coop for the evening. <laughs> One thing that I wanted to add was the sand that we dug up from digging the hole for the Granny Smith apple tree. We ended up using in the chicken run. We had to build this area up because it was on a heavy slope and I had used topsoil and rocks and things just to build it up in here to flatten it out so there wouldn't be much ponding of water at any point. The chicks have been digging in the corners of every post and it's not a big deal but we threw a bunch of rocks down there and I kind of wanted to put something on top of it so the sand I think will work out good for now. That's what I did with that. Always trying to think of ways that we can use the materials that we come across or something else. That'll do it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up we super appreciate it and we will see you next time thanks for watching bye